This video is brought to you by Azam Sharp School. You can go to azamsharp.school to find out one of the largest catalogs for iOS development videos. Let's go ahead and check out some courses. You can see that on Azam Sharp School, you can find courses about MVVM design pattern, core data, MV pattern, full stack iOS development, reactive programming, even Swift data and server driven UI, Create ML, Trust Event Development, Reality Kit, and many more. And there are also workshops. These will be live workshops accessible to everyone. The pricing is just insanely low, only $50, and you get two to three hours of live workshop on Zoom about Vapor, and then you have Swift Data Fundamentals, and even unit testing. So go to adamsharp.school, and learn iOS development. Let's go ahead and take a quick tour of the app that you'll be building in this course. You can see that it is the Reminders application and you can also check out the Reminders native app, which is the iOS Reminders app from Apple. Currently the app is running in the dark mode. You can always go ahead and change it to light mode. It, I actually like the dark mode, so I'm just gonna toggle appearance over here. You can see that you can build different kinds of uh, YouTube videos or you can build vacations, uh, these kind of lists. So everything is available in there. Udemy courses, create a course. If you want to add a new list, you can go ahead and add a new list. Let's go ahead and call this a purple list. And there we go. We got our new purple list added. You can also use the search feature to search for a particular item, particular reminder. Apart from that, you can go inside the list and add some items. So let's go ahead and add buy food. The great thing about this is you can click on it and go to the inspect. And now you can build in some other notes. So I can go ahead and say buy cookies and ice cream. There we go. You can see that whenever I select a date and a time, it will schedule that particular notification. But since the time is already passed, so the notification is not there. And I can mark this as done. After a few seconds, the item will be gone. From our stats views, we can look at the schedule notifications or schedule items, completed items and we can look at all the different items that are available. And that's it. That is what we'll be building in the whole course. This is a Swift UI integration with core data. All right, everyone. Now let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we are setting up the core data stack. So I've already created a Reminders app. That's a completely like a Swift UI application. You can see that there's no code written. All of this code is by default. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new group and I will call it Providers. And basically we will only have one provider over here that will be called the Core Data Provider. And the job of the Core Data Provider will be to simply set up the Core Data Stack. So now let's go ahead and see how we can set it up. In order to set it up, we are going to go ahead and first import core data. Next, we're going to go ahead and create a class called core data provider. This class will be responsible for setting up the core data. Now we want to create a single instance of the core data provider. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a static property which is called shared and the value of this property will be the core data provider itself and not only that but i'm also going to make sure that the constructor or the initializer is private by making the initializer private what i'm saying is that you cannot really call the init from the outside okay all right the next thing we need to do is to create persistent container. So let persistent container 
which will be NS persistent container. And over here inside the init, we can go ahead and initialize our persistent container, which will be NS persistent container with a name. Now this will be the name of the model file or the data model file, and we currently don't have that. Don't worry too much about it. We are going to create it a little bit later on. I'm just going to call it reminders model. This will be the actual data model file that we will have to add, and the data model is where we create our entities. Currently we don't have this, but we are going to create it later. And now we can call the load function. We will get the description, and we'll get an error if there's an error. Hopefully not. In this case, I think we will get an error because we don't have the reminder of the model file, but we will create that. If you get an error, well, there's no way out of it because it looks like you don't really have the core data model correctly or something went wrong, then the app will just crash by using the fatal error. Okay. All right, so we have the core data provider, create an instance, we have the persistent container, that's fine. The next step that we want to do is to create the data model file for the core data. So let's go ahead and do that in the next lecture. The next thing that we want to do is to set up our core data model file where we will create all the different entities. And for this app, we will only have two entities called my list and a reminder. We will get to reminder later on, so you don't have to worry about it right now. But let's go ahead and add our model file. So I'm gonna say new file. And if you scroll down under the core data section, you can see the data model file. That's the one that we need. Let's select it. Whatever the name that you want to give, I'm just gonna call it reminders model. Okay, there we go. So you can see that the reminders model is already open in a designer, in an editor, and we can use add entity to add a brand new entity. So there we go, we added an entity. It's called entity right now. Let's go ahead and change the name from entity to my list. I'm not gonna call it list because it might collide with some other things that we will do in SIFUI, like there's a list view control, which is called list. So I'm just gonna call it my list. And my list basically means that this will be one of the list, one of the categories. So I can have a my list with, for groceries, I have a my list for recording YouTube videos. So categories, okay? And now we can move to the attribute section where we will go ahead and create different attributes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say name, and that will be string. Let's open up this, and make sure that this is not optional. So we don't really want our name to be optional. R name is a required thing, so it is not optional. The other thing that we will say, which is the fun one, is the color. Each of the category or the list that we're gonna add will have a color associated with it, just like the reminders application. Now, colors, we can't really store like, I guess we can, like the string, the code of the color, but we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna store transformable, which basically means that we are going to be storing a particular type when we store color, and we can define that particular type in the custom class section. So I can go over here and I can say, we will be storing UI color. That will be the type of it. We have to define the transformer and all that stuff. And we will do that probably later on, but we can call it over here, UI color transformer. Now this is gonna come a little bit later on because we still have to implement the transformer. The, tra the job of the transformer will be to convert it to the UI color, and when it's saved, convert it back to you know the thing that we were storing it. So convert it to the binary type and then the UI color, all right? Back to the UI color. We don't currently have anything called UI transformer, so just by naming it UI transformer, it's not gonna work. We still have to go and create the UI transformer. So this UI color transformer. So this will be our own transformer, okay? 
All right, that's fine. Let's go ahead and build it. Okay, so now we have a problem, a big problem actually. Okay, you can see the problem that we are having, which is the interesting one, is if I go to my reminders model over here and I click on my list, which is the only entity I have, it is telling me that the code generation is class definition. Code generation means that core data will be responsible for generate code for you. And in this case, it's going to create a class called my list for us with the properties, one for the name, one for the color. But the problem that we are facing, if we go to the actual issue, is it did create my list as an extension, that's fine. But it tried to add UI color over here, which is which is also fine because that's what the color is. It's a UI color. That's what we'll be storing in the database. UI color is found in UI kit. Now I will be very tempted to go over here and add UI kit or try to. It's not even editable, but I can't really do that because if this file is not editable, I can't really edit it. Even if somehow you are able to edit this file, well, this file will be generated again, so it will be overwritten. So what are our options in this case, right? We, if we cannot import UI kit, how can we use UI color? Well, one of the things that we can do is we can tell core data that don't automatically generate these things. So how can we tell core data? Well, we just click on the class, click on the entity, and instead of class definition, we will simply say manual or none, which basically is saying that I will do it myself, don't worry about it. I will create the class myself. Let's go ahead and build it. Okay, that's fine. So now we don't really have any generated class called my list. It's up to us to create that class. So I'm gonna go into my new group. I'll call it models. And in the models, now I can go ahead and add a couple of these models, okay? So I'll add one model where we will declare the class. And you can name these files anything you want, but usually when you are writing your own file, you usually name them my list plus core data class. This will be the actual class and all the properties will be in the extension. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a new file. I'll call it my list plus core data properties. So all the my properties will live over there. Now let's move our attention to my list core data class. This is just going to be a very simple class that is going to be representing my list. So import core data, public class my list, which is NS manage object. And that's pretty much it. We just have to make sure that we are decorating it with objective C and it will be able to find my list. So that's the attribute that we're going to put it there because core data is implemented in objective C. We have to tell core data that the my list is represented by my list. In the properties, this is where we can go ahead and create all those different properties that we need. So it's completely up to us what we import and export. So there we go. All right. Now, all of these functions, you can see they're having some issues because we don't have these things. So let's go ahead and uh, remove these. Actually, most of these functions we currently don't really need. And since this is our own file, we can go ahead and import UI kit, which will allow us to work with UI color. Let's go ahead and build it. Okay, looks like it's building correctly. All right. So it gave us, by creating these files manually, it gave us the flexibility of adding a property for color, which depended on UI color, which in turn allowed us to add UI kit because this is our own file, we can edit it as we wish. So now we have the my list original class 
and we are extending it to add some more properties to it. I have a fetch request also. We have a thing called name, color. I don't really think we need reminders over here. Not yet at least, so let's remove that part. We don't really need it at this point. Eventually we will. So this is our class. This is how we have created the core data model, okay? Next, we need to see that how we can go about in saving a particular list to the database. So let's go ahead and learn that in the next video.